this podcast is brought to you by Midwinter. These guys were a startup, an entrepreneurial startup some 10 years ago, way before it was even cool to be a tech startup, and have since then gone on to win every single award year after year after year when it comes to financial advice software. I use them, um, I know a lot of people that have, and if you haven't already jumped onto the new way of doing business, which is all cloud-based and API, so it all talks to each other, then go look at yourself in the mirror and sort yourself out and go get Midwinter. Guys, just before we get started, the uh, I mentioned it already before, um, but for anyone, uh, in terms of the functionality for here, I'm in the top right-hand corner of the panel where the video is. There's a button that you can click and change between speaker view and gallery view. If you flick it over to the gallery view, um, you'll you'll see everyone, um, all the, the speakers. Uh, the speaker view is just for the person that's speaking. Um, there's a chat but uh, there's a chat box on the right hand side. Feel free to um, type in your comments. We'll also have time for questions at the end. Um, just make sure that you're uh, you've got your chat set to everyone, so so that everyone can see it. Um, as we go through as well. Um, guys, I've had a busy couple of weeks with XY Advisor. Uh, we're working on a couple of really cool projects that we're going to be able to share with you guys soon. Um, we've got, in a fortnight's time, we've also got uh, Steve Salby. We've, we've got a couple of um, financial planning business coaches coming up so you guys can get some cool tips. Uh, I mentioned it before as well, but if anyone's uh, got people in their networks that they think would uh, get something out of this session, feel free to um, pass this on to them. There's a link. Bill's have posted the link in the chat box for the next session so you can register um, and you can shoot that around if you want to share it as well. So, Kate, once again, thanks very much for joining us. Great, great to have you. Um, first up, can you just give us a bit of background about um, your business, you know, who you work with and a little bit about your journey? Sure. A little bit about my journey. Uh, I always tell the same joke that I actually got my degree in photography in Australia. Uh, I went to RMIT University in Melbourne. So um, hello to everyone that's there. That is by far and away my favorite city in the world. And then I took the natural progression from photography into financial planning. So when your government decided to kick me out, they wouldn't let me stay anymore despite everything I tried. I came back to the States. I was in Seattle. I actually worked for a family business. And in that business, we specialized in working with companies. So going in and doing, really talking with employees. And it's everyone from straight out of college, you know, making an hourly wage to executives. And I realized early on, people have all sorts of questions. And it's not that they need their assets managed. It's not that they need full financial plans or products sold to them. They just have questions on life and basic things. And they kept asking me, where can I turn? And I spent years trying to research it and I couldn't find anything. I actually found a book called uh, The Dummy's Guide to Financial Planning in a bookstore back when those existed. And that's when I learned about becoming a certified financial planner. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And so I did that for a number of years. And then it was three and a half years ago, I started my own business because I kept trying to find a way to help people without managing assets, without selling products, without doing big, huge, expensive financial plans and just being there for people of all ages, all incomes, all asset levels and answering whatever questions they have. Cool. So, um, so to be clear, so you work in your business, you help people with their money type issues, but you don't do any product, any investment advice, any insurance stuff, any, any sort of financial products at all. Right. So I can and do advise on it, but I am not the one selling it. So that's been something that has been really fascinating. When I started my business, three and a half years ago, there was nobody else in the country that I could find doing what I was doing. So there was no precedent. There was nobody I could talk to. Um, I mostly got a lot of people saying, Hey, that's a really good idea, but I think you're crazy. <laughs> so that yeah. just kind of pushed me forward even more. And just in this really short time span, there are now, you know, over 250 sort of financial planners with similar business models to mine. And it's actually forcing the product companies to change the way they operate because they're starting to realize, and I'm even seeing this happen in South Africa. I know some of the regulations you guys have going on there, but product companies are going, hey, planners, advisors, and consumers are all catching on, and they're really wanting just straight advice. So if they want us to continue recommending their products, 
it's actually forcing the product companies to come up with better and better products at more transparent pricing. Okay. Awesome. So, so tell us a little bit about how you, you work with clients and you know, what the, the conversations are and, and, and how you help them. The first conversation I ask everyone, whether it's an intro call or in one of our first meetings is when are you happiest? Because that's another thing I learned working in companies is you get to meet a lot of people that are maybe in their 60s and their 70s heading into retirement and not to be negative, but a lot of them are kind of like, oh, I'm in this job. I just kind of did it and got married and had kids and I'm, I'm not retiring to anything, but I'm retiring from something. And I don't think that's the best way to live life. So I really want to get to people as soon as possible. And that might be in their 50s and say, what does make you happiest? What drives you? You know, what are your best memories? And work towards figuring out what that is and then coming up with a financial plan to go after it. So to me, it's the most important to get behind the why for everything with clients. Because we can tell people, hey, you need to save X percent and you need to have life cover and you need disability. But if they're not working actively towards something, then they don't always act on that. So I work on that and then once we realize, okay, what do you need, then I'm with them through every step of the way. So if it is an insurance product, I'm on every email, I'm on the phone calls, I'm making sure that you know, they're getting the right type of advice. Um, so it's not just, hey, go do it and I'm throwing you to the wind. I'm, I'm still actively involved in all that. Okay, and so do you have like a network of people that you um, recommend to your clients or do they choose their own people if they need it? product type help as well? I usually choose them. So that's, that's what's been great is, I mean, there are some companies here that specialize in only working with fee only financial planners. So that's been really great to have that. There are also more and more independent uh, insurance salesmen and whatnot coming out that specialize in working with fee only planners. So they know how important it is to us to have that transparency, to have those great client relationships and someone that I can work with as a team. Because I don't ever want someone that's going to make me look bad if I provide that recommendation. Oh, yeah, so that's yeah. the other reason I want to be involved in those conversations and, and provide that great service. Yeah, okay. Awesome. And so how has your service sort of evolved over time? And I know we've chatted a little bit about this, but just for the people watching, you know, where did you start? How has that changed? And, you know, is it changing? Well, I know that it's changing, so... So I started it, it was really built out of those employee meetings. And I realized you can actually accomplish a lot in like a 30 minute meeting. So I used to do just, you know, 30, 60, 90 minute coaching sessions. And it's kind of like Reddit does those ask me anything. And so, you know, sometimes people just want to know what's the difference between different types of retirement accounts or how to choose a credit card or how to choose, you know, credit cards with airline miles, whatever it is. So I started out really in that coaching capacity and I love it. And over time, I evolved more into a monthly retainer model. So totally flat fee, and it kind of works out, you know, over the course of a year, we cover just one or two topics at a time. So rather than being an overwhelming financial plan with here are 75 things you have to go do, good luck. We just kind of take it piecemeal by what's most important. And now with everything I've got going on, I actually spend a lot of time coaching advisors on technology and different business models and speaking and whatnot. So that's been super rewarding to me. So in my private practice, I'm moving back to just that coaching aspect and, and being, being there to answer questions for clients without so much of the ongoing. Okay, cool. And so what is the, what is the sort of client journey look like? If you say you start with the, you know, you know, where they're happy and, um, why, you know, what they, what they want, then what's the approach? Do you have a, like a structured approach that you go through or how does that all work from the client side? Yeah, it has been. And, and everyone is a little bit different, but it really is okay. Figuring out when they're happy and that creates a different starting point for everyone. But it might be, let's say they just had their first child, then obviously we're going to do the things like getting their estate planning in order, getting their life cover in order, you know, making sure those important but not very sexy things are taken care of, and then kind of working down the list. So for me, it's always about what is the most important thing right now, and then some other things we can work on maybe in three or six months. But 
that also keeps the client really encouraged and really involved. And it creates an awesome ongoing relationship because they know you're there for everything. And I've really become friends with, with pretty much all of my clients, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And can you give us a, a feel? Cause I know you do some pretty interesting stuff. You touched on a couple of things like, you know, um, life insurance and uh, estate planning and, um, and investments, but what are the other areas that you work through with clients typically? A lot on, on kind of life coaching stuff. So we'll, you know, talk about, do they like their job? I think sometimes people tend to get a degree in something and then go to work somewhere. And then 10 years later, you're like, Oh, why did you get this job? And they don't, they don't really know. So, you know, figuring out, do they want that job? Is it time for a raise? I'll coach people through asking for a raise, asking for a promotion, um, what to look for if they go into interviews. I uh, talk a lot about travel and different ways of travel hacking and, you know, whatever their passion is, just finding a way to work that into everything so that it keeps them engaged and, and motivated. Yeah. Okay. And so what, and what about the other sort of peripheral areas of money? Cause I know that we've chatted before around even things like choosing health plans and phone plans and all those sorts of things you get involved in that. Is that right? Yeah. So that really comes into budgeting. So I would say that's another huge thing that I work on from the get go with everyone. And this is not just clients that are young or that don't make much money. I would say more often than not, you know, in, US dollars. I mean, I have a lot of clients that make over $15,000 a month and they have negative cash flow. Mm. So I spend a lot of time with them going through all the line items. I can see all of their accounts and we kind of do an exercise of, you know, okay, I don't care what it is, if it's coffee, if it's traveling, but asking how much happiness does each line item bring you and really digging into it that way. Cause you can start to realize, Hey, I have these expenses that I've had for a long time, but you know, I don't need it or that's just something that's been there and I can cancel that. So that's a good way to really get into, you know, some of the more emotional sides of things and it can bring up what people pay for and why they pay for things. And it can, yeah. it can, it can get emotional, but I think that's what we're here for. Honestly, if we don't have those conversations yeah. and I don't know that we're doing the best service for our clients. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so what would you, what would you do differently? If you started three and a half years ago, you've had this bit of a progression. Um, yeah, I always like to ask sort of what are the, what are the key learnings and what would you change? I, for three and a half years have wanted to do more videos and that sounds like such a funny thing, but I, I want to keep reaching more people, which is why I love speaking to big audiences because it's, you know, I, I love working with people one-on-one, -on -one, but it's also to me, like, how can we all have the biggest impact? And I just, I think there's a lot of good information out there, but I think there's a lot of confusing information. So I'd love to do something like that to, to help more people uh, from the get-go, maybe do more courses or just some way to involve more people. And I've even thought about, you know, the, the first summer that I was in business, I got a lot of women. I don't know why this happened, but I got a lot of women that were looking to see if they could financially get out of their relationships. And I kept thinking I should have brought all those women together to kind of create a, a group. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. So, t so tell us a bit about like the client, your client engagement process and um, what the, what those conversations are like with clients in the early stage in terms of how you talk about, you know, what you do and, um, how you're going to work with them, what the results that you'll, you'll get for them over time as well. Well, I try to use my website for a lot of that, which if you look at it right now, and I think I saw it in the chat box, I was playing with it over the weekend and I've actually like deleted a lot of stuff on there. So it's kind of a hot mess. So don't judge me on that yet. Um, I'm constantly <laughs> tweaking my website and changing things, but I honestly believe one of the best uses of your website is to weed out people that are not a good prospect. So it should simultaneously like attract the people that really are and weed out the people that aren't because I think we all tend to spend, you know, maybe a little more time than we should on talking with prospects, figuring it out. And I think if we looked at the time there, you know, that wouldn't be great. So I'm actually going to be adding a section to my website on the cost of not working with a financial planner because that is kind of a conversation yeah. that I have a lot. And I think that can do a great job of highlighting 
um, the value we provide, just coming at it from a different perspective. So think about, you know, times that people get sold things they don't need, or if you're not saving enough, but putting it not in a making people feel bad way, but in more of a, oh yeah, that's, there's really great value there. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so when you say like not working with the, the wrong people, um, do you think that that's more around just that they're not right for financial planning or just they're not right for what you want to deliver? I think both. So for me, I'm not huge on the investment side. So people that maybe really like day trading stocks or obsessively watch the market or just really want to talk about, you know, what's going on in the economy and think like every day and every news bit is a big deal that they're not going to be a good fit for me. So they're a good yeah. fit for somebody else. <laughs> I'm happy to refer them to you. Um, yeah. If, if that's you, but, but that's not me. And then, um, you know, like on my, on my about page, I have really quirky pictures of myself because, you know, I, I think we all need to think like a prospect and think, okay, if I pull up 10 people's websites, right, let's say, you know, 10 of the people that are on this call, there's a prospect sitting at home right now, they're going to pull up all of our websites next to each other. What are they going to see? Are they going to read through all of them and go, okay, great. Everybody in this industry is a holistic, comprehensive planner with a unique approach to my situation. Uh, yeah. You know, like it doesn't do anything. If everybody's in a suit and everybody went to college and we're all exactly the same, how are they going to choose? And so for me, that's why I have like really goofy pictures because I'm like, this is me. And yes, it's serious, but look, like this is life and I want to have a bit of fun with it. And if you just need to take things too seriously, then we're probably not a good fit. So people will go to my website and they'll go, wow, she's really fun and I want to work with her. Or she looks like a nutcase. I don't know who would work with her. I'm not going to call her. Which is great. Yeah. Like people are either going to, you know, it's, it goes both ways. Yeah. Self-selection. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So how do you work with them with your clients ongoing? I know you mentioned that retainer model and then going to the coaching, yep. what, you know, what does that actually look like? And, um, I know that you, you do, you're doing all of your work with clients remotely as well. Is that right? Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So t tell us a bit about yeah what that looks like. So with the ongoing model, I, I try to kind of create like a 12 month calendar because that also keeps clients kind of on track. Um, I definitely have some yeah. clients that actually I have quite a few clients. It's hilarious. They're, they're like the opposite of their children. Like, give me homework. What's my next homework? What do I need to do next? And they get all excited, like to do all these things. And so by kind of having that calendar and going, okay, we don't need to do it all right now. It will be taken care of over the next 12 months. This is what it looks like. Let's focus on all of the progress that we've had so far. So it's really keeping them focused and then really kind of appreciating the wins after everything gets done. So we collaborate online. Mm -hmm. um, I use Money Guide Pro personally, which is awesome. So they have a really great kind of conversation layout for the financial planning software. And so the first, the first call is 90 minutes and that entire call is centered around, you know, what are you worried about? What are your wants? What are your wishes? You know, it, it can be really fascinating even with couples that have been married 25 years kind of talking about, yeah. okay, what's that crazy thing that you wanted to do before you guys even met that you kind of pushed to the back of your mind and really focusing on that because those conversations continue to come up over, over the next 12 months. You just start to plant a seed and you know, you might see people start to change what they want. And, and I think that's one of the best parts about the ongoing relationship is you stay focused on what's important, but also kind of building that trust over time, building the relationship and starting to see, people's own wishes and desires change. Yeah, absolutely. And so do you work with people, like do you do catch up every month? Is, that, is it monthly? Is it more than monthly? Is it less frequently for some or? It depends on the people, honestly. Some want to talk every other week and that's fine because they're usually like 15 minute calls. And so I think that's one of the yeah. best parts about meeting virtually is you didn't have to get in a car and drive and sit in traffic and get all dressed up. And then when people come in, I think we feel this need to have, you know, like a 90 minute meeting versus if you're on the phone, you'd be like, Hey, you know, did you get that life cover? Is everything going? What do we need to do next? And, and you can be on with your day versus I have other people that are like, Nope, only need to talk once a quarter. We'll do like three things at a time. They're happy. They're good. So I, I try to be easygoing and set those expectations in the beginning. And that kind of comes yeah. in, in with the calendar as well. It's like, Hey, do you guys want to tackle something every month? Do you want every quarter? And 
whatever works for them is, is fine with me. And they know if anything else comes up, they can call me. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think it's important to, you know, work with your clients on, on their sort of terms. I know find the same thing in our business as well. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So last question for me before we turn it over to, to Phil, uh, who I know has got some questions as well. What are your top three tech tools? Ooh, I would say my online scheduler is probably one of the most valuable things. So I personally use schedule ones. There's Calendly, Time Trade. I mean, there are a ton of them. I've just used schedule ones for years. So um, that works great for me. Uh, and uh, just as of last week, you can integrate um, paying with it. So I'm changing everything. So it's like you book, you pay, done. Don't have to worry about it. Good. Um, so I, I look at everything in terms of how can I make things as easy as possible for me and for clients. So clients can go on, they can schedule meetings whenever they need. Um, no big deal. I'd say that's number one. Uh, top three. I guess QuickBooks, <laughs> because that's my accounting software and we by. need it. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and Squarespace. I mean, I do all my own website work. I'm changing my website constantly. I actually just launched uh, another website yesterday, belmoregroup.com. So that's my like advisor coaching and speaking and everything. And I sent it to my mom this morning. She's like, I was wondering when you would come up with a new website. It's been like three weeks. <laughs> so I, I don't, I think it's that photography degree I got. That's one of the ways I keep that artistic side of my brain going is fussing with websites and presentations. Yeah. And stuff. Awesome. Yeah. That cool. Funny? All right. Well, I think that's that's it. That's all of my questions. I'll turn it over to Phil now, and then um, after Phil, we're going to get to some questions from the people watching in. So, if anyone's got any questions from Kate, um, just just type them into the chat box, and we'll uh, we'll come to them very shortly. All right, Kate. I, I love your approach uh, and and how you're doing stuff. I've been frantically writing down notes um, myself, but I've also got some questions. So I'm big on getting practical and, and like how you're actually running uh, the business. Um, so can you just um, when you say you give advice uh, on like you said you give advice around products, but you're not actually selling the products. How do you do that? Like, do you um, tell them you need a million dollars worth of life insurance cover and then? you'd hand them over to a referral partner? Yeah, so I would say a, a good example is a client that I just did this with, just finished actually this afternoon, and it's a married couple, and the husband just doesn't like life insurance. He just doesn't really believe in it, but they're, they just bought their house, they just moved in last month, they're actively trying to have kids, they're young and healthy, and I was like, we have to get this in place you know, as soon as possible, but he just doesn't want it. And so I called um, the company that I work with here and I was like, hey, do you guys have any strategies for what I can do? So they work as a really great partner. And so they actually introduced something to me that I didn't even know about, which is like a laddered life insurance policy. Then I called the husband. And I was like, hey, what if we do it this way? That way it's not so intimidating and you don't have, you know, the whole policy for the whole 30 years. And it was great. So to me, that's a perfect example of, you know, I provided the recommendation, the client kind of pushed back. I brought in the experts in that area and working together, we came up with an awesome solution for the client. Yeah, cool. So you're, you're essentially saying this is the whole plan, but the actual products that we're going to utilize, you, you refer that out to someone else to say, this is the actual investment you're going to be investing in, or this is the insurance company we're going to have the policy with. Yeah. So I'd say when it comes to investments, I do generally make the very specific recommendations and personally, and I'm glad I'm on video when I'm on stage, I'm making sure nobody has like sharp objects. I don't personally believe that the assets under management model is correct for most people. And I don't really believe it's going to be around, you know, in 10 or 15 years. I think with technology, I think honestly, you know, clients can keep their costs down, can keep it super simple. You know, I, I personally am a passive investment, you know, philosophy. So I like to show clients how easy it is. And I will say very specifically, you know, yes, invest in this fund, this amount, you know, you can go online and make the trades. You don't need to be paying anyone 1% of your assets. Yeah. So there I'll make very specific recommendations. Yeah. Okay. No, cool. And can you give us an idea around the fees? You can, as much as you're comfortable with telling us about. Yep. How you, Shane also asked how you, uh, you know, have your monthly retainer and how it all works. 
So the monthly retainer has been, and again, I'm kind of slowing that down towards the end of the year, just while I work on some other projects. Um, but it's been, I would say the average client is about $995 up front and $250 a month. Yeah. Um, but if you're you know, younger and you're just starting out and I would say you don't have anything in place, then it's, you know, maybe 795 up front and 150 a month. Because I, I find, and I'm sure a lot of other people do, if you don't have anything in place, it's actually a lot easier than if you do. And we have to kind of unwind a lot of stuff and redo it. Yeah. And, uh, and they pay that just out of their bank account direct debit. Yeah. Yep. So when they kind of schedule online, that initial invoice goes out straight away. And then they sign a contract so that, yep, on the first of every month, it's just automatically debited. They're automatically sent an invoice. I don't have to worry about anything. I just wake up on the first of every month to an email that says <laughs> you have money in your yeah, account. You got paid. Oh. Yep. If only it was that easy for everyone. <laughs> wake up at the start of the month and just, just have money in the bank account. Yep. Right. Okay. And you talked about doing budgeting, uh, like literally going line by line and saying, hey, maybe your phone bill is too expensive. Um, how, yep. how much time does that take you and your business to do? Um, and is that one of the things that you, you'll do over the course of, of a year? Yeah, so it doesn't take me much time because I, so I use eMoney for the kind of client side of it. And so they connect all of their accounts. It's an aggregator. It automatically categorize, categorizes everything like a mint.com. And so then I, that's kind of a homework assignment I give to clients. I'm like, hey, go through, make sure everything is properly categorized as high level or as granular as you want. And then we'll go through it together. So yeah. that's kind of something I push off onto them. And then we just have a meeting and saying, Hey, you know, did you know you're spending this much in this category? Is that something that you really valuable and makes you happy? That's fine. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, we are constantly revisiting it, especially if I can see month by month that it's maybe not getting better, yeah. then we'll have that conversation again. <laughs> yeah. And, and you did talk about um, once a, you, pre, you pretty much try and tackle one or two things over the course of a year. Um, what are two things a month? Oh, okay, a month. Oh, I thought, yeah. I thought we were talking about a year. I was going to say, how do, how do you actually manage <laughs> that? Um, so, okay, one or two things a month. Do you just yeah. um, you just go highest priority that we need to tick off it, um, and, and we go from there? Yeah, yeah. And then if it's, you know, tax time, then that's going to be generally the same for everyone. Whenever their open enrollment for employee benefits is, that's going to go in there whatever month that is. Okay. Um, so some things are going to be a bit more uh, static depending on, the time of year and so if clients have been with you for a few years how because one or two things a month is quite quite uh there's a lot yeah. to do in the first two years but then after that how do you manage that so it it gets more into a maintenance mode so usually their fee drops um some clients i've had since i started and i've honestly even had, had conversations that hey you know i think like we're pretty much done i don't want you guys to keep paying me if we're not doing much and and they've honestly said hey we've built such a great relationship we want to know you're always there we don't want anything to change if that's okay yeah. which is kind um, of a, a massive compliment yeah. <laughs> yeah you're like okay <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going to reduce your fee, but if yeah, you know, yeah. that's okay. Yep. No, that's good. Uh, all right. I'm going to get into a few more questions. Um, oh, my last one was, uh, you talked about working remotely. So yeah. you, you, you pretty much don't meet with clients face to face. How do you yep. find building a relationship with the clients? Do you find it easier, harder, or, or you think it's the same? I would say it's, it's easy. So one of the big things is, you know, I think it's clear on my website again, not right now. Don't judge me <laughs> when it's, when everything's back up there that oh, I only work with people virtually. Yeah. So <laughs> that's fine. So nobody's going to call me that wants to meet in person. Right. So that's one of the things about just weed those people out. So that's, that's never been an issue. Um, I would say one of the most fascinating things is, is that I tell people is most of my clients are actually over the age of 45. So this is not just, you know, oh, all the young people out there and the millennials. Think about how many people that are even retired or are executives. I mean, people are busy. You know, they don't always have time to drive in or take a train or, or whatever it takes to get to your office. And they travel a lot. So, you know, I talk to people if they're traveling on vacation and something comes up, I travel all over the world. So it, it kind of keeps a very fluid 
um, relationship. And I mean, I have some clients that are like, Hey, I want to meet at 7am on Thursdays. That's fine with me. Other clients want to meet at 6pm on Mondays. That's fine with me. I don't really work any normal hours. So I think my clients see it as a huge value add and they might not work with a planner if they didn't have this option. Do you, um, do, do you find that difficult that you um, essentially have to almost always be on? Um, no, because I would say I'm definitely not. I get a lot of Facebook comments about people asking if I ever work because um, I'll go for you know a three hour bike ride on a Tuesday morning and then work Tuesday afternoon. So it, I would say it's more selfish. I tend to fit my work around my life rather than my life around my work. So it's not, it's not all driven by clients. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. I'm all, I'm, I'm all over that. I, I think that's the best way to do it. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've just got a few comments. Um, Only a few. Shane, Shane says he loves your website and <laughs> I personally love the photo that you've got on. I think that's, that's good to, it's always good to show personality in a website because I mean, mine is pretty dry to be honest. Um, and it's something I need to be working on and I don't update it anywhere near as much as you. Um, I last touched it a few years ago, I think. Um, so I think you're doing, doing good stuff. So Mark's asked, um, do you also find your clients uh, online or virtually uh, or do you find clients like in networking or conferences? They all find me. I mean, I've tracked where all of my prospects and everything have come from from day one and there is no consistency, which is actually, I would say, a good thing. So when I started my business because nobody was doing what I was doing, it was really easy for people to provide referrals. And I get a lot of emails that say, hey, I didn't know a business like yours existed. Like because I show my personality and I, you know, have different stuff on my website, then I tend to get stuff that's like, you know, people will follow me for six months and get my newsletter. And then they're like, Hey, I, I trust you. You seem great. Like you have no conflicts of interest. I want to work together. So that will come from, you know, referrals from existing clients, professional referrals. I've been in the industry for 12 years now. Um, people hearing me on the radio podcasts in the media, you name it. Yeah. And, um, my, my last question is more about now you kind of moving to working with financial advisors. What is the um, breakdown of um, <clears throat> between your time and your energy and effort into moving into this new business with working with advisors and continuing with your current financial planning business? I would say probably half and half and it's, and it's been half and half for, I would say a, a long time, um, which is, which is great. It's been awesome to see all around the world, the interest in people moving to more of this business model and, I mean, a lot of young planners seeing changes in the industry and, and people that are even mid career that are like, Hey, I'm burned out. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm tired of selling product. You know, what else can I do? So to me, it's, it's hugely rewarding and especially helping women in the industry and women come into the industry. Hmm. And, and I think there's a big shift, well, especially in Australia, I don't know about the U S so much, but in Australia there's a big shift to move to kind of the work that you're doing as well. Um, yeah. Jane's also asked just to get into a bit more granular detail about the scheduler that you use. So yep. do you, um, do you pretty much give clients like five time slots that they can pick or do you have time slots that you have every week? I've got 20 time slots that clients can take up. How does that I work? Say, I don't have any consistency in my week to week schedule at all. Um, so it's whatever is available. And I do make it clear to all of my clients, they are more than welcome to call me on my cell phone anytime um, earlier this year, it was actually my, I don't do new year's resolutions, but it was my new year's resolution to bring back the art of the spontaneous phone call. <laughs> yeah. So I've told clients, I'm like, look, if something comes up, just give me a call real quick. I mean, sometimes that can accomplish a lot in a five minute phone call and it's not a big deal. So they almost never take advantage of it, but I think it's great to have that there. So with the scheduler, just to make but you, you can, does it connect yeah. your, it connects to your calendar and almost every slot is open if, unless you've got a, unless you've got something in there. So it's totally up to you. So you can say that you only want to show two meetings a day. You only want to show eight meetings a day. I mean, the, the detail that you can do on this is unbelievable. You can say how many meetings you want total in a week. You can say you want a 15 minute buffer between meetings. You can say how long every meeting is. I mean, it's, you can say you can book four hours before 10 days before. I mean, you can, 
I don't think there's any detail somebody would want that that it doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds great. So I'm I'm done with my questions. Everyone's done. I've been heckled already by uh, Jenny Brown as well. So thanks for that, Jenny. Um, and thanks heaps for um, joining us. Um, and Benny, do you want to finish us off? Uh, yeah. Look, I just had I just had one question that um, that I think that people might might find quite interesting. So you're working with, and maybe we've spoke about this a little bit before, but you're working with people in other areas, these other professionals that do the specific sort of execution of your advice. How do you go about finding the right people and what's your criteria? Um, you know, is there a structured approach to doing that? And, uh, and what, what would you give, you know, your top tips for someone that is looking at, you know, finding other people whether this is for just for making sure their clients get looked after or for building that sort of two-way relationship? So I would say my number one criteria for clients, professionals, anybody, I will not work with anyone that I don't want to hang out with at a barbecue. Like that's my, that's my number one. So, I mean, even in an intro phone call, if I can tell that I just wouldn't really want to hang out with you, then you're not going to be a professional partner. So it has to be someone that like you can build instant rapport with and get along with. So I had a, a client actually here in Denver, I was trying to find an accountant for them locally. And I got recommendations from some other professionals here and I called three different accountants and the first two I just knew. I mean, you can tell over the phone that you're just not going to be a good fit with someone. And the last person I called, he was like, I love, you know, I want to be a team. It's important to me to be a team. I work with financial planners. Like I love the fee only model. I support it. I get it. So I mean, it, to me, it's, it's fairly easy to kind of find the people that you know will and won't be a good fit. And also keeping an eye on the industry and what's going on and more and more companies really, you know, appreciating this model and actively working to help, you know, the kind of clients that come to, to virtual fee-only planners. Awesome. I think that's a great tip. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, but the barbecue test. <laughs> Is that what it's uh, being called? <laughs> I just yeah, 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 I think that's it. Yeah. But yeah. it's, I mean, that's the thing is, is this is such a great career. I mean, it is, it can be, and I talk with too many planners that, you know, work with clients that just drain them and drag them down. And that's, that's just not how it should be. You know, just because somebody isn't a good fit for me doesn't mean they're not a good client. They're just not a good client for me. So yes. I think we, I think we should all be fine with recognizing who's not good and, letting them go find find a better fit for them 100 percent. awesome i think that's a great way to wrap things up as well um kate thank you so much for joining us it's been great i love your approach we're getting heaps of um comments in support you're probably going to be bombarded on your website so you better get tweaking uh, on there um great to have you guys thanks to everyone for watching in um stay tuned and we Next fortnight, we have Steve Salvia, who, uh, who coaches financial planners. We're going to steal some of his top tips on what you can do to, to improve your approach with clients. And he does some really cool stuff around uh, client psychology. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a, Phil's put the um, link to register in the chat box there, so you can click through there. Um, also, share it if you've got um, people in your networks that you think would, it would enjoy the sessions, shoot it across to them as well. Guys, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks again, Kate. Thank you. Okay. Awesome session. Thank you. You guys are awesome.